Hey everybody, this is Erica, the technology nerd who likes to film stuff, and I finally got my hands on an Xperia Z2. This took long enough. I have to thank GSM Nation so much for sending this over to me as quickly as you did. This is the Unlocked D6503. It's got a bunch of LTE bands in the box. We've also got a pair of noise-canceling earphones, and it's also got a charging dock. So it's a really nice little package, and I'm excited to show it to you, so I will do that. And also, this is kind of an update video on the video that I made before about the Z2, the display face-off. I did find some interesting things about this display, so I want to get into all of that right now. All right, we have a fairly big box, although no one cares about the box. Let's just open it up. So the device just sits in there like so you can see that i got the white version i just think that this is the most appealing version of the phone it looks very clean very classy although as i pointed out in my videos from mwc this part that's on here is actually an injection molding plastic that's joined with the metal so this entire thing is not metal like previous devices so what that means when it has injection molding like this is yes it can help with antenna reception but it can also stain a bit so I've already seen that this can indeed stain. I was able to get some of my pocket dye from my jeans to rub off onto here. I was able to wash it off, but I don't know if there's any type of detriment over time with the staining and if it eventually won't come off. So of course, if you're worried about staining, get the black one or get the purple one. So I mentioned to you that this did come with quite a few goodies. This is quite curious. It's a very big box, but it's very open and almost empty looking inside. So here we have a charging cradle, a magnetic charging cradle, and this is really nice because never have I ever had any company send any type of accessory in the box. And this is incredibly important because with a device that's waterproof, we do have these flaps. Now these flaps help the device be IP58 certified, so it's dust resistant and not dust proof like the Galaxy S5, but it has a little bit higher water resistance rating. So for the Galaxy S5, it's IP67 certified. This is IP58 certified. So instead of it being able to go underneath the water down to one meter for 30 minutes, this can go underneath the water further than one meter and also longer than 30 minutes. So when you have these flaps that you're constantly having to open up, especially if you need to open it in order to get to this charging port here, I would think that over time it can wear out so it was really gracious of Sony to include this cradle because we've got some pogo charging pins here and a magnet so that it can just sit here. You don't have to worry about opening the flaps anymore and we can charge it. You see it's got a charging port right there. So that's really very nice. Also when it's plugged in and you set it on the dock it turns into a different orientation so it turns into the landscape orientation. So I can imagine having this sit on my bedside table and being able to watch movies at night and also using it as an alarm clock. So this is really nice of them to add this. Because honestly, in the past, when I've had Xperia phones, I just didn't want to pay the money to get the dock. Then we've also got some noise-canceling earbuds. Now these pretty much look like any other earbuds that we've seen, but they've got a microphone right here. So when you plug these noise-canceling headphones into the device, we are met with a notification that says noise-canceling. Tap to specify the device type. So I make sure to say noise canceling headset and you can choose two different things under here. There's noise canceling. You can choose always on, auto or off. So I just choose always on. And then you can also choose the noise environment. So this microphone is able to feed ambient noise into the Z2 device where the Z2 device can filter out the noise. I haven't had a chance to try this out just yet, but I do take a lot of plane flights. I'm excited to try it on there. I should also take the bus as well and see what happens with that. I am hearing that they work pretty well. They're not going to get rid of every bit of noise, but they do help quite a bit with reduction. So I have taken these and tried to plug them into both my Galaxy S5 and my M8. And the Galaxy S5, it just sounds muffled. It sounds like the sound is very far away. And with the M8, it doesn't even work. The sound just comes through the speakers still. So this seems to only work with the Xperia Z2. I don't expect to be able to use these with any other smartphones. Then they've given me a charger here. Thankfully it is the United States charger. It's a 1.5 amp charger. We've got an adapter here for the charger and we've just got a USB charging cable. 
So before I continue on with the Xperia Z2, I really wanted to take a second to thank my sponsors over at audible.com so much for making content creation possible. If you don't know who Audible is, they are a leading online provider of audiobooks. They have over 150,000 downloadable titles from every genre that I could possibly think of. An interesting book that I've been listening to lately is called Extra Lives, Why Video Games Matter by Tom Bissell. Now, admittedly, when I was younger, I did not care at all for video games whatsoever, but in my adulthood, I really needed that sense of adventure. So I just had to buy myself a Game Boy Micro. I've been getting into vintage gaming, playing with emulators, playing with MOGA game controllers, but I have not yet graduated onto console gaming. So this book has kind of helped me get into the mindset of the console gamer. He's really helped me to get a better appreciation of console gaming, something I just did not quite understand before. I might have to try this out soon. So if you are curious about this book or any other book, please follow audible.com slash Erica. You can download this book for free and try out Audible service. And if you download this book and you really don't like it, you're free to exchange it at any time, no questions asked. And also, since Audible is an Amazon company, you can easily log in with your Amazon information. So follow audible.com slash Erica. I find this to be quite entertaining. He's very different. And most of all, I really want to bum ideas off you guys. What are some really great console games that you recommend somebody who's a novice like me try out? Let me know and tell me if you like this book as well. Now taking a little bit of a look around the device, this is a 5.2 inch display. It's IPS. It's also a triluminous display. It's actually wide gamut. I actually made a video about the Z2 and more about how that works. If you would check out the link in the description, you can see that video. It's called Z2 Display Face-Off. So I kid you not, this device really is able to produce the range of colors that an AMOLED display is able to show. And that just has to do with the backlight technology. In my full review, I will get more into that. And also in a few minutes, I want to show you some graphs because there's some variations in the display. The display that I see on here is different from the one that I saw at MWC. So I've become quite curious about that. What's pretty neat about this device is that on the front, we've got stereo speakers. We've got one on the top and also one on the bottom. It's kind of weird though, that when the speaker phone is on, that only the bottom one works. But when you are using GPS, both of them work. I don't know why they chose only the bottom one to work though. And I don't know if they're going to change that either. So some people have asked me, does this sound as good as the HTC One M8? How does it compare to the HTC One M8? Well, the HTC One M8, or just the M8, it's such a mouthful. The M8 has a lot better speakers, honestly. They're a lot louder. They have a lot more depth to them. They've got more bass. They've got a nice, realistic, warm sound to them. And the ones that are on the Z2, they're all right. I'd rather have these stereo speakers than not have stereo speakers but they don't get all that loud, honestly. I do wish that they would get a bit louder. And also I don't get a lot of bass from them. They kind of feel flat to me. So the M8 has louder speakers, very nice sounding, lively speakers. And the ones that are on here, well, they're stereo speakers. They're there, they work well, but they don't give me the immersive experience that the M8 does. But the Z2 does take better pictures, has a much better camera by a long shot. We're not talking about 20.7 megapixels versus four megapixels that's on the HTC One M8. We're just talking about pure picture quality. I'm going to be taking a lot of images and a lot of video with this. I haven't had time to do that as I've literally just gotten this device. So this is a very fully functional camera. So many very fun things to play with on here. And trust me, I will be getting into this as soon as I possibly can. One thing I did want to know right away out of the box was how the audio was in video, because when I played with this device at MWC, when I listened to some of the recording back, the audio was really not so good in video at all. So I took some samples, and actually while I took some samples, I also took some 4K samples because I wanted to see how much 4K cropped with the image stabilization. And I did find an interesting bug that I want to show you, and I actually want your help here because I really don't know what's going on or if any of you have experienced this same thing. So basically what's happening with this camera application is that the very first time that I decided to try out 4K, I did kind of a selfie. I discovered that the audio and the video were completely out of sync and there wasn't anything that I could do to fix it. First, I restarted the phone and it was still having this problem. Then I went and cleared all application data, still having the same problem. 
Now keep in mind, when I got this phone, the first thing I did as soon as I took it out of the box was I updated it. And then once everything was done updating, I did a factory reset. So I should not have had any issues whatsoever. So I don't know if this is a hardware or a software issue or if anyone else has seen exactly what I'm talking about, but I'd be curious to hear about that because if this is an actual problem, I want to exchange it. So I am sitting in my beanbag chair testing out the audio. This should just be a normal 1080p because I realized before the audio was really not very good in video, so I'm just curious to test that out. Now I am still sitting in my beanbag chair and I am recording in 4K. It has the steady shot stabilization on. That's something that I really do like about the Xperia Z2 is that it has stabilization in video. I'm sure it crops a little bit. I want to see what it looks like now when I take it off the crop for stabilization. Now I am recording in 4K. I turned the video stabilization off. I saw that the audio was off a second ago. I hope not, but you can see that it's not cropped as it was before, so let's see. Okay, so this is the last 4K test I'm going to do. I restarted the phone several times. It's just been acting up like a complete brat. I don't know why. I don't do anything to these things. What's wrong? Why do I always get broken stuff? So eventually, after getting incredibly annoyed, I restarted the phone four times. And finally, when I went underneath the application and I took a 4K video of myself, it worked. I don't understand. So that is incredibly disappointing to happen first thing out of the box. Come on, Sony, that does not inspire much confidence at all. On the plus sides, I got this device because of all the LTE bands it has. I can go back and forth to France and I can be here on T-Mobile or AT&T and LTE will work. The only thing is that AT&T is a bit of a stickler and you have to have the right IMEI and also the right data provisioning in order to use their LTE. It's a big joke, but I can use LTE with this device. I am positive. So you've got band four and band 17. If you are in the United States, you definitely can use this phone. You just really need to badger AT&T to get them to have this working properly with LTE. It's possible, so do not let them tell you that it's not possible. Also, I can already tell that battery life is excellent. I'm really happy that we have those 3200 milliamp hours. So you can see I'm able to get a full day very easily. And you can see I've got almost six hours of screen time, no issue. It's fascinating because I've had the screen on full brightness. Admittedly, this display does not get as bright as what's on the Galaxy S5 or what's on the HTC One, but still, to compensate for that, I put the device on full brightness pretty much 80% of the time, and I was still able to get almost six hours of screen time. That's great. We've also got the excellent stamina mode, so if you want to turn the brightness down and you want to turn stamina mode on, this device, you just it's going to last forever, I feel. This will probably be the device I want to keep in my pocket because the battery life is just excellent. Another nice thing about this device is the simplicity of it. It is Android KitKat 4.4.2, so we do have the newest Android operating system. But unlike devices like the Galaxy S5 and the HTC One M8, we don't have all those extra features. We don't have something like Blink Feed. We don't have My Magazine. Although some people might say that it is even a little bit too simplistic because we're missing something like a do not disturb mode. And also the only thing we have access to on the lock screen is the camera. Whereas what I really admire about the HTC One M8 and the Galaxy S5 is that I can access all kinds of applications right from the home screen. I can unlock, I can access Chrome, I can access the camera messaging phone calls. And there's several other things that I can do as well, such as if I slide from the left, it brings up Blink Feed. I really do like these settings, and all those are pretty much missing. Although they did add the double tap, which is always nice. So I do like that it is very simplistic, but I do sometimes miss the features that are on the M8 or the Galaxy S5. Although through various apps, I'm sure I can add back that functionality. Another setting that I find to be incredibly useful if we go underneath display mode, we have white balance. Now, sometimes the display out of the box looks too blue or something just doesn't look right to your eyes. So you're able to adjust the red, green, and blue sliders to whatever your liking is so that you can get a white point that looks right for you. 
So I mentioned that the calibration is not the same as what I saw at MWC, and it's really a pity because they did a good job at MWC, at least as far as the grayscale goes. So when you look at the gamma that was on this device at MWC, you can see that the line is pretty much straight along gamma 2.2, and that is pretty ideal. If you take these three lines and you push them upward, what that does is it makes the gamma go higher, and if you make the gamma too high, it makes the image darker and it also oversaturates the image. If you take those lines and you push them much lower, that's going to make the image look kind of washed out and it's going to make the gamma too low. So unfortunately, Sony just had to do their own little punch or something and mess up the gamma calibration. So what they did is that around mid-tones, that's kind of like skin tones, going more towards the highlights, they push the gamma way too low. And now skin tones or people's faces just look too washed out or too light. And it's just so sad. I'm going to try to get my hands on another unit and see what it looks like, but I don't expect to see any difference. Sony probably just decided this last minute and said, yeah, this, we want this. Oh, and if you didn't believe me about the color range of the Xperia Z2, here we have this very wide triangle. The one that's in the center is the sRGB triangle. That's usually the range of colors that most LCDs are able to show. And what we see with the larger triangle is usually what AMOLED displays are able to show. Now the S5 gamut is not the same. It's a lot more extended towards the greens, where on the Z2 it was more extended towards the reds. But you can see that with different backlight technology, it's very, very possible to get very punchy colors, and a lot of people like that. But right now I'm not even going to get into the color accuracy of it all. The color accuracy really doesn't even matter though, because what they do anyway is that inside of gallery and inside third party and their own movie application, it seems that they add some type of post processing to change the colors, make them more saturated, whether or not you have the X reality engine on. All the X reality engine does is make them even more punchy and adds sharpening. I will get into this more in my full review and once I get my hands on another unit, so stay tuned for that. So this is a very nice device. This display for an LCD really does pop. I'm so happy that Sony decided to go with IPS because the viewing angles are a lot better. Granted, they're not as good as AMOLED, but this device has a lot to offer and there's a couple of problems with it right now. And I'm really hoping with some software fixes that they can fix this because it can be quite brilliant, I think. So thank you everybody for watching. This has been Erica, the technology nerd who likes to film stuff. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Stay tuned. I'm going to be doing a very in-depth review of this device as well. Right now would be the time to ask me questions in the comment section below so that I can approach them in my full review. Also, when I'm not posting video reviews, I do post a lot of updates on Google+. So if you want to follow my Google+, link in the description below, you can get to Google+. You can interact with me there. So quite a nice little package that this came with, although I'm sure not all these accessories will be released if it comes to the United States, unfortunately. I'm not sure when this is going to be released on US carriers, if ever. Most likely it's going to be released inside of the Sony store. So the American Sony store, people will be able to get it from there. I'm not sure when that will be either. I hope by this summer, although they're being so fickle that it's disgraceful. So I don't really know. But for me, this device is perfect. I live in the rain, pretty much. And it just looks and feels elegant. So I'll have more to say about it later. Have a good night, everybody. Make sure to leave your comments.